What is going on guys? Welcome back to another episode and we're actually looking at something that is a very very simple today. The script is extremely simple. It's on the right hand side over here. Very simple to copy as well. Um, we're actually having a look at Unity events and how they help me create stuff in a much faster manner and they also allow me to hook up functions directly in the engine and I like that quite a lot. So here's what we do. We have a couple of colliders. We have this one over here, left switch, right switch and they have callbacks you can put. So if you enter, say, the right switch, we could say, hey, that directional light, I don't want to see it open anymore. So light, turn off. Oh, and since we're here, let's also turn it back on. So here is the logic behind my right switch. When I enter it, I turn the light off. Every second while I'm inside of it, I move this platform to the right. And then when I exit, I turn the light back on. This is the kind of result we get. So we can control a lot of things from outside, uh, which is something I enjoy quite a lot. So guys, this is what we'll be looking at today, and let's get right into it. Alright, so today's episode is about connecting stuff and just making our game a little bit more connected, our system a little bit more connected. We have a bunch on the right hand side over here. Um, yeah, let's, let's actually start connecting them a bit. We're going to start with Unity events in Collision. So I've recently discovered Unity events. I don't know why I haven't discovered that before, but I enjoyed them quite a lot. It allows me to do a lot more work in the inspector, which I used to really not like so much, but now I'm starting to see the the, the benefits of doing so um, on more of a designer perspective. So I have two objects in here, one called left, one called right. It's cubes, simple cubes with um, box collider. Now those box collider are trigger. So here they are, both of them are on trigger. I also have the original Pepe, which is um, the 2D side scroller movement. And here it is. Okay, so what we're gonna be doing today is I'm gonna be creating a script for my collider. Now on my collider, you're gonna see that they do have the script I've just created. So both of them do have the collision trigger. Let's open it up and we're going to go through that script extremely quickly. Like that's, I'm not lying. This time is gonna be really, really fast. Um, starting with this one. The callbacks, we're going to use a couple of callbacks. So by default, if you go on a object, any object that has a modal behavior on top of it um, and a collider, then you have access to a couple of functions. Let's have a look at them. First one's called on trigger enter, on trigger exit and on trigger stay. So those are basically being called once an object and foreign object enters the trigger of a collider, um, just like our box. So if we walk through our box, this is going to be called once. Um, on trigger stay, this is going to be called every frame while say our character is inside of that box and on trigger exit, self-explanatory, it's being called when in exit. Um, there's also more than that. So you also have on collision enter. This is only called when you enter collision and there's a slight difference that I quickly want to highlight. So here is a trigger. This right here, this box is a trigger. In fact, if, I'm if I am to hide this mesh render and open the collider, you're going to see it over here, right? Let's walk through it. This is a trigger. How do we know? Well, we're able to walk through it. Even if the mesh is on, this is a trigger, right? But if it's not a trigger, if we remove its trigger, it now becomes a collision and we can't jump on it. Well, we can jump on it, but we can't walk through it. And that's the big difference in between a trigger and a collision. So trigger, you can walk through it. Collision, you just enter contact with. And um, well, that's what it is, right? <laughs> so today we're gonna be using on trigger simply because uh, we don't have collision, we have triggers instead. But it's the same principle over here. So when we enter collision with something, this would be called, when we exit collision with something, this would be called. And as long as we're sticking to that thing, that would be called. And we have a couple of other um, callback here that could be quite fun um, to play around with, especially after doing the, the particle yesterday. So the video about particle, you could have a on particle collision callback. Okay, like I said today, we're gonna to be sticking with on trigger enter. And here they are. So here's my first call. I'm gonna lay down the three of them. So on trigger enter, on trigger stay, and also on trigger exit. And here is what I'll do. It's gonna be very simple. On enter, we're going to check whether or not it's null by using the, uh, the separator at the end. So the question mark. And if it's not, invoke. We'll do the same thing here on exit. Now those callbacks that we'll be defining through the inspector, I haven't explained that, but basically over here we have Unity events and those are part of Unity Engine events, but those are um, 
here on the right hand side. So they let you have nice little callbacks just like this. We've done that in the past as well, but it's a nice little reminder that they exist. Um, and a cool thing about those, by the way, is that you can have as many as you like. So you could say, hey, um, I don't like the light, right? So when I enter that box over here, let's say that light should be enabled false. So technically, as soon as I enter this, the light is going to be turned off. There it is. So that's something very cool. <laughs> I like doing that quite a lot. Being able to control stuff directly in the inspector is one of my new favorite thing. Having that said, let me quickly make a nice little setup in which if you enter, the light goes off. And if you leave, the light gets back on. So it get turns back on. So it's the same object here. I say light enables equal to false. And when I exit on exit, it will be, be it will be um, back to on. So let's try that. Walking around, going here, light is off. Exiting, light is on. Okay, so that's fairly cool. That's very simple. The most simplest code we've ever written in this channel, uh, written in this channel, English. The next up is gonna have to do with staying inside of the trigger. And as I've mentioned, this is actually being called all the time. So if we say like, ah, like this, and we go inside of a trigger, you're gonna be spam, like spam. How many frames do you have per second? That's the amount of time you're gonna be spam in your console, which is quite a lot. So here is something that I propose instead. On trigger stay, we could turn that into a tick. What that means is, let's go over here and say tick delta is gonna be equal to one. And what that will mean is, okay, so let's try to do an action every one second while we're inside of this. And here's the code that will be carrying us to do so. It is that simple code over here. And what else could we do? We're gonna need a um, timer for that, so tick timer. And the logic is fairly simple. So as long as we're inside of this thing, we're going to increment our tick timer by time that delta time. Then if that gets above our delta, so our rate, basically how often do we want our action to be triggered, then we're gonna go inside of here and reset that. Well, we're not going to reset. We're gonna do a minus equal tick delta because we're, we might have a little bit of you know overlap that um, that's going to add up on our number. We don't want to do is equal to zero because else we're no longer like in sync with real time. We're gonna lose a couple of milliseconds um, in the long run. So instead you do minus equal take delta. And this way you can always stay like very close to one every second. Okay, um, having that said, I am also going to go here in the untrigger enter and put it on zero. So once we enter, we reset it to zero. And then after that, every second we call on trigger stay. And on trigger stay is on tick basically. Okay. Let's try this out. What could we do exactly? Well, I don't have any setup for this scene actually, but I do have one in my other scene, my state machine scene um, that I wish to show you. And here it is. So on the right hand side over here, I have this, this is going to be the equivalent of my box, my right box and on my tick. So my tick Delta every second, I am going to call a, a script called test platform move, right? If we have a very, very quick look at test platform, move right is simply going to plus equal your position with a vector three dot right. Same thing for move left. And you guessed it, this one over here has move left. So if I stand over here on my right hand platform, it should move by one every second. And oh, wait, no, not at all. That's not working right now. What happened? So tick delta is zero right now. That's not what I wanted to do. Um, I had a mistake over here. I should set my tick timer to zero, not tick delta. So it was basically resetting the amount of, um, well, how long we should wait before we move again. So that's definitely not something we want to do. Let's go back here. And now every second, I am going to move this thing towards the right. And if I go on my other platform, it's move left. And that's all I wanted to show you guys today. It's nothing much, but it's actually something I enjoy doing quite a lot. So I don't have any specific thing to do with this game at the moment. However, um, all the, the bunch of mechanics we're going to create are going to allow us to make a little game at least. So something that's going to be decent to look at and also to interact with. Uh, it's a nice coding experience basically. So guys, thank you so much for watching. That's actually where I'll be ending today's episode. Very short one, but I think it's something I really want to share because I've started using that. I enjoy it quite a lot. And, um, and that's it. So 
If you enjoyed this video, please make sure you hit the like button. If you'd like to see more stuff that I actually like and actually use, <laughs> uh, subscribe for more. And I will catch you guys very, very soon. Make sure you check the website. There is not going to be a package today. Um, yeah, there's no, there's no package. You guys can look at this code and copy it. It's fairly, fairly simple. Only 30 lines. You can do it. I believe in you. Okay, guys. Thank you so much. I'll see you tomorrow. Cheers.